Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. For Fender Friday this week, we have an in-person review of the little-known Fender Prodigy guitar. This was a model that was produced from 1991 until 1993, and was basically an early attempt for Fender to compete with people like Ibanez, Jackson, and Charvel. When I first picked this thing up, it kind of reminds me of like an Ibanez RG series guitar. It's a little bit pokier here at the horns. You've got a more aggressive looking pick guard on it. Personally, I think the body looks pretty chunky in comparison to the strats that I'm used to seeing. So it's just kind of a weird mashup of a more super strat like guitar but yet still traditional when you look at the neck for the most part. So these guys lasted about two and a half years before they were discontinued. Some people like to say it's because there was a lawsuit looming, but most sources seem to say it's just because these things didn't sell very well. So due to poor sales, these things are kind of rare. Rare, but not necessarily desirable which means you can pick these up for relatively cheap. Reverb puts an estimate of 350 bucks to 600 bucks on these. And these were made in the USA. And that kind of makes these a great deal if you only buy USA made guitars. So the Fender Prodigy One had a classic synchronized tremolo system. I mean, it just looks like what you'd find on a regular Strat. You've got the same back plates on it and everything. However, in 1992, there was a Prodigy 2 that came out, and that one had a Kaler on it with a locking nut, and it had all black hardware, so that means black tuners, and black bridge, so it was kind of like a blacked out vibe. Electronic wise, both of them were the same, with two single coil pickups and a humbucker in the bridge. A traditional five-way toggle blade switch with a master volume and a master tone and the output jack on the front. They offered them in some pretty cool colors. There's black, white, metallic blue, which I think sounds great, metallic red, which is this one. It's really incredibly difficult to get the true color of this guitar to show up on camera and in photos. It's kind of like a burnt orange color in person. It's kind of cool. Many sources also claim there's a sunburst, but I couldn't find a photo of one. Alongside this series was also a Prodigy bass with active band electronics. So that's pretty much everything I can tell you about the Prodigy. To sum that all up, it's basically just Fender trying to get into other people's super strat markets and it didn't go over so well. So these are kind of obscure Fender guitars in their history that are relatively inexpensive. Personally, I thought it played and sounded great. It does the whole fat strat thing. So neck pickup, nice and juicy. Your fourth position does that whole glassy but fat thing. Middle pickup, standard stuff. And then your second position does the quacky strat thing. But then, you hit it in the bridge, for me it's like, oh, I'm in familiar territory again. It's got that humbucker sound. So you get rid of that single coil hum, but yet you still have all the other stratty goodness. So I was impressed with this. I don't think I would personally buy one for myself. And that's mainly because I feel this guitar is confused. It's not quite super, super stratty, but at the same time, it's not quite Fender. So it's just kind of in between territory where if you're a Fender diehard fan, you're gonna love this because it's something different. But to everybody else, you're probably just a little bit confused by this model. I think I still like the Bullet 1 Strat better than this, but this is definitely a great option for the money. I mean, what other USA made Fender can you get for this price? Not that many. All right, I've got it all taken apart here so we can take a look at all these pieces. Online, it always just says two single coils and a humbucker. It doesn't give them any type of fancy name, so I don't have a lot to say besides just letting you look at how these things were built. The humbucker really does not say anything on it either. Looking at the wiring, I would say everything looks untouched to me. I don't really see any type of readable pot code, but you can see a little bit right there. 
The body itself is a swimming pool route, so you could put anything in here. Like if you wanted to mod this to be like a triple humbucker Stratocaster, I think you could. You could at least make it an HSH1 without any big issues. And you've got a nice deep control cavity there. Control wise, you do still have a five way switch and a single master volume and a master tone with your output jack on the front. With the neck off, we can see what has been advertised as an alder body. You can also see there's some other random holes here for some reason. And that looks like maybe a date stamp to me, but I can't really make out what it says. It almost looks like it says like 1993 or five. And we also have some sort of stamp right there. As far as the neck goes, we have a rosewood fretboard and a maple neck with skunk stripe. We do have the name Maggie written on line one, then there's a little J. As far as the pencil writing, it looks like it maybe says 6-11-1991. Not quite sure though. Take a closer look at the logo here, serial number N1004131. I believe that makes this a 1991 Prodigy model made in USA. I went ahead and popped one of those tuners off to see if there's any markings on it, but I didn't really see anything, but these look like they were Schaller made to me. If you are interested in this guitar, I would suggest a full level recrown job on these. I mean, these frets, they look awful when you get them in the light like this. I mean, the divots really aren't that deep, so I think you definitely have tons of life left in these frets to work on them. But there are a few choked out notes that we'll go over later in the condition segment, as well as some chewing up of the side of the fretboard. The neck plate really didn't have anything special going on. With it reassembled, we can see it has the traditional 25 and a half inch fender scale. 1.66 inch nut width, which increases to 2.01 inches at the 12th, and neck depth at first fret 0.87 inches, and it stays quite thin at 0.92 at the 12th. The back control plate is multi-ply, it has a black, white, and black layer. However, looking back here, it seems like there might have been a different back plate on it at one point in time, or maybe they just messed up installing it at the factory, I'm not sure. It looks like we have an A written underneath the trem system as well. But take a good look at how chunky this thing is. It's definitely beefier than I remember most strats being. And I almost feel like this cutaway is a little bit more pronounced as well. So it's definitely different feeling as compared to regular Stratocasters. This particular example weighs 7 pounds, 12 and a half ounces. Thank you. 
This instrument sounds let's go ahead and review its condition this guitar it's pretty worn i mean it's definitely been used by somebody quite a bit on the face of the headstock i mean you don't have too much going on except for up here you've kind of got some white scuffs where it's probably dinged against the ceiling or something you can see that continuing on to the ball end of the headstock and that's something else about these guys is they do have a slightly smaller headstock on them Serial number is N1004131, which makes this a 1991 model. Personally, to me, it almost looks like the nut might have been replaced or it's raising up a little bit right here. Not quite too sure. I'm not an expert on these things, guys. The frets, as we saw earlier, they do show considerable wear. I raised the action a little bit. That way, this note will actually ring out a little bit better, but it is still choked. I would highly suggest a full level recrown job on these frets and a professional setup. Because it's fret buzzy in many areas. But it's still definitely playable. I mean, you could buy this thing and play it for years. I mean, you might get annoyed with this whole third fret thing. But, I mean, it's not an unplayable instrument by any means, but you might want to invest a little bit of time and work into this one. You've got many scratches and light nicks and dings along the face of the guitar here, but for the most part, I think it presents itself pretty well. Very contoured armrest right here. I don't see any, like, major gashes out of the top. Pick guard wise it is chipped off right here, and there are tons tons of scratches on this pick guard. Honestly, it looks kind of bad in my opinion. It's very beat up. But at the same time, you know, somebody loved this thing to get the frets in that kind of condition and the pick guard all scratched up like that. Back of the headstock, you can see your original tuners. I'm really digging all this wood grain on the back of the headstock as well. Got your skunk stripe going on down here. The neck, it's pretty chewed up. I mean, you can see you've got some nicks and dings down here, but cosmetically for me, the side that you see as you're playing, it's got a lot of indentations here, like maybe a capo was left on it, or I'm not sure, maybe a guy's ring was dinging it up. You can definitely feel those. I mean, sliding up and down, I mean, it's not like a huge divot, but if you run your fingernail over it, yeah, you'll definitely feel it. So know that those are there. I do not see any cracks in the neck pocket, so I think you're good to go there. And you just kind of have lots of scratching on the back, but like no super chunks out of the guitar. Especially scratched up here. 
not too bad of shape, but definitely well worn. Under black light, you can see it does glow and it glows quite a bit here. It almost looks cooler this way, I think. But we'll take a quick look around the edges here. But a nice and even glow. Even the back of the neck is looking pretty good on this one. You can see there is some finish wear right there. But thankfully, no breaks, cracks, or repairs. This instrument comes in an aftermarket TKL case. I'm not even sure if these things originally came with cases or not. But if it did, it's definitely been replaced. You can see you've got some tape residue, but you have three latches. And on the inside, it's just kind of a black material. And you do have a little bit of cat slash pet hair, whatnot. I will sweep this out for you real quick, but just know allergy wise, you might be allergic to this case. There is a tremolo bar in here. It has a black tip to it. It does work with the guitar. I have no way to know if it's the original one or not though. Fit wise, it's pretty poor. I mean, it slides up and down, slides left to right like this, but the neck support, I mean, it keeps it in place well enough. For shipment, I'll definitely have a bunch of extra bubble wrap in here for you. But you know, it's just the case is the case in this case. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Fender Prodigy Super Strat, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.